This is 5 Minute Friday with special guest Clem DeLong, the CEO of Hugging Face. Yesterday at the Scale Up AI conference in New York, I interviewed Clem DeLong, the CEO of Hugging Face, for a super informative discussion on open source machine learning and transformer architectures. It was such a great conversation, I was confident you'd love to hear it too, so here you go. Enjoy. Hi there, welcome back from the break. Thank you, Nikki. I'm John Crone, Chief Data Scientist at Nebula and host of Super Data Science, the most listened to podcast in the data science industry. I'm thrilled to be here with Clem DeLong, co-founder and CEO of Hugging Face. From my perspective, the coolest, most prestigious company for a data scientist to work for today. Wow, what an honor to be here with you. We're bummed that due to pandemic-related travel restrictions, we can't be with you in person for Scale Up AI, but fortunately, we can still bring this enlightening conversation to you virtually. To give you some context on Hugging Face, who are named after the friendly looking Hugging Face emoji, they are a New York based startup that has raised $61 million in venture capital. They're a platform used by more than 10,000 companies to build a broad range of machine learning products, features, and workflows. They are also behind an open source library called Transformers which is the most widely adopted software library for machine learning models to deal with written or spoken language, a big exciting area of machine learning called natural language processing or NLP for short. We've got lots more on all of that from Clem himself. Bonjour Clem, ça va, how you doing? I'm doing good, thanks so much for having me. Nice, yeah, our pleasure. Perhaps uh, you can start us off by filling us in on what transformer architectures are and why they have become so ubiquitous in NLP and machine learning today. The transformer concept is only a few years old, and yet every cutting edge natural language application already seems to be incorporating them. Yeah, I think it uh, came out, the first kind of like fundamental paper came out in in 2018. It was called uh, uh, Attention is All You Need. Uh, introducing this fundamental new way of doing machine learning based on transfer learning, right? So the idea of transfer learning is that you're going to train a model on a very, very large data set uh, for NLP, so for text, on the large dump of uh, the web, basically, right? You scrap the web and then you train a very large model on that. And then you're going to be able to transfer this learning from uh, one simple task, which is usually mask filling or text completion uh, for any other machine learning tasks, right? So, so to go from there to being able to classify text, uh, for example, the sentiment or the topic of text, being able to extract information from text, being able to classify an image, for example, in computer vision, um, and, and it really to cover the machine learning domain, right? From like a lot of different approaches uh, in the past, it started to beat the state of the art on every single science benchmark that you, that you can look at, really creating kind of like more accurate prediction, uh, but at the same time being very easy for companies to use. So that's, that's what we've seen at, at Hugging Face with transformers becoming almost like the default way of doing machine learning. And at the same time, machine learning becoming like the default way of nice. building technology for companies. Nice. And so why did you decide to take that amazing technology, transformers and transfer learning, and make it freely available through an open source license? How is that an effective business model to be giving some of your most valuable intellectual property away with no practical limitations on use? Yeah, that's a good question. So at, at Hugging Face, we believe that machine learning is becoming the default way of building technology. So that's kind of like the fundamental technology switch, technology trend of the, of the decade. And we think it's, it won't be happening just with one company. You know, even if it's like a very large company like, like Google, like Microsoft, if we want to make this happen, uh, we have to involve the whole field. We have to involve all scientists working on the domain to be able to democratize machine learning, right? So that's why we're taking a very open source driven, community driven approach to building things. 
Um, and, and it worked wonder for us as a company because a little bit like a, like a GitHub that has seen kind of like this network effect of uh, software engineers sharing their code on the platform. Mm -hmm. And so people adopting that and, and it creates this kind of like network effect. The same thing applies to us in the sense that we have thousands of researchers who are sharing more than 30,000 open models on the Hugging Face platform. And it's attracting companies that are like using the platform and then asking the next researchers to share their models. So there's a kind of like this network effect that you can build in your startup thanks to a model like that. Nice. Yeah, it's a powerful platform, no doubt, and made even more powerful by all of those open source contributions. So speaking of companies that use it, do you have one or two examples of companies that have used Hugging Face to scale up their impact? Yeah, we have a lot. So we have over 10,000 companies that are using us from, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, all the way to kind of like new startups uh, building with, with machine learning. Uh, some that I'm really excited about are uh, things like uh, Grammarly, for example, for grammatical error detection, um, you know, helping you, for example, if you're not like an English native like, like me, obviously I'm, I'm French, as you can hear from my accent, that helps you kind of like correct your mistakes, um, helping you write better. Uh, I think it's, it's a really, really cool use case. Um, I'm super excited about Bloomberg, for example, also like the Bloomberg terminal using us to do like summarization of, of text. Uh, I'm excited about companies like uh, Segment, Segment.ai, um, that is doing kind of like automatic segmentation of uh, images to be able to detect objects in, in images. Um, so there are like a million, million of them. Uh, what we're seeing is now uh, for every single feature, workflow, product that companies built, you can almost kind of like start by thinking, how do I do that with machine learning? Uh, and almost use that as a starting point. And it's almost like if machine learning doesn't work, then you'll fall back into this like old way of doing technology, with, which is with writing like a million lines of code. Um, so we really envision this world, world where like in a few years, machine learning is going to be like the default way to build technology, to build features, to build products. Yeah, no doubt. And that's the idea of software 2.0 in Andre Karpathy's words, as opposed to software 1.0, where in the software 2.0 world, uh, instead of trying to hard code how everything's connected, we'll have machine learning algorithms that can be doing that automatically to greater efficacy than if we try to hard code it manually ourselves and certainly with a lot less human effort. So very cool that Hugging Face is playing a key role in that. Do you have any advice for companies that are interested in using machine learning but don't know where to start? Obviously, you should start from, from the Hugging Face Hub where, where there's like uh, 30,000 open models that they can, that can use without any, any training. So they can use what is called pre-trained model. Uh, so even if they don't have machine learning engineers, now software engineers are really able to use that and to build machine learning features. Um, and then I, I would really recommend to start with like a small, simple feature and really kind of like build the muscle, build the kind of like machine learning muscle. Um, Sometimes kind of like companies think that, you know, their first machine learning project is going to be this big conversational AI that is going to talk with customers about every single subject to answer 100% of questions and things like that. Truth is, it's really hard. Uh, and that's maybe something that you're going to get to like uh, a few years after you started building this machine learning muscle. So I would recommend to start with something really simple. Like you have customer support emails. How do you classify that? How do you extract information from that? How do you, you have kind of like a chat interface? How do you build autocomplete, right, for, for this text? Um, and, and go from like these very simple initial features and then kind of like build on that, build on the learning in your organization. And then progressively, you'll be able to build more and more ambitious machine learning features. Nice, that is a really good guidance for sure. 
And then once a company does get going with machine learning, so starting with baby steps, building little machine learning muscles, to use your analogy there, um, what's the biggest roadblock that you see en route to production deployments? So the company gets going, they're doing a bit of machine learning, um, but then they want to productionize. Where do they tend to run into trouble? Interestingly for me, most of the challenges are more human than technology related, um, especially when it comes to kind of like changing your mindset. For example, machine learning compared to traditional software, it's much less deterministic, much less uh, explainable than uh, regular software. And so you have, like as a product manager, as kind of like a founder of a startup, be comfortable with not completely understanding, uh, not being able to exactly predict all the outcomes of your machine learning features. Um, and that's, that's the main roadblock because it's a, it's a big mindset switch, right? Especially for people who've been building software for 20 years, 30 years in a very deterministic way. So like uh, changing your mindset about the potential of the feature, but also the limitations of the feature, uh, to me, to me, it's like the biggest thing. And then if you manage to overcome that, I think we're in a state, technology speaking now, that, that, that you'll, you'll be able to kind of like bring value to your company by, by using machine learning. Uh, but you have to overcome this kind of like a, a mindset switch in a way. Nice. So then are there things that people can be doing to mitigate concerns that they have? So if they have to take this leap and not understand exactly what the outcome might be, are there yeah, mitigating uh, ways that people can you know, become comfortable with these deployments and know that, um, that the tools aren't acting in a way that, say, uh, is, is acting nefariously or incorporating unwanted bias, that kind of thing? Yeah, there are a lot of like strategies to, to do that. Um, first is like to be very transparent in the organization about what your uh, model can and can't do. So for example, at Hugging Face, we have um, someone called Dr. Margaret Mitchell, who pioneered, who was like the co-founder uh, and co-lead of the ML uh, ethics team at Google before, and who pioneered something called model cards which are kind of like standardized way of uh, explaining, describing what your model can and can't do, uh, both in terms of like functionality, but also in terms of like uh, ethical considerations, right? Where it's going to be biased, where it's not going to be biased and, and things like that. So you can use tools like that to create transparency within the organization, but also with your users and with your, with your customers. It's, it's really important. Um, you can use tools like uh, Gradio, for example, which is an easy way to create demos for, for your machine learning models so that other people can try with their own examples and see, you know, if it works or, or if it doesn't work. Um, so these are, these are some, of, some of the ways that you can help kind of like uh, doing this, uh, this mindset uh, change and kind of like make everyone feel more comfortable about, about integrating machine learning. And the last one, it, it's obvious, but I think a lot of people are, are forgetting it, is that you should work around your use case to make sure that you use machine learning the right way. So if you're not confident, if it's like too critical a feature, let's say you want to build kind of like a, a, you're building like a hiring tool, right? Uh, and you want to use machine learning. Obviously, you shouldn't use a machine learning model to filter resume because you know that the machine learning model can be biased towards women, for example, or towards minorities. Um, so you should use it maybe in addition to team members and in addition to humans to complement them, but never be kind of like the only kind of like filter. So making sure that in your workflow, in your product, it's used on the right use case with the right setup around it is also a way to, to mitigate the, the risks. Nice. Those were an awesome uh, series of ways of mitigating and getting people over that hurdle, getting comfortable with getting their machine learning models into production. You've provided us with tons 
of exciting context on what's possible with natural language processing today, how easy open source tools and how easy Hugging Face can make uh, training or using these machine learning models. For you, what are the most exciting natural language applications that are coming up that are maybe impossible today or tough to scale today, perhaps due to narrow applicability or impractically high error rates that you think will be widespread five to 10 years from now? What, Clem, is the future of machine learning? That's, that's a billion dollar question, right? It's, it's a really tough question to answer. Some of the things that I'm uh, excited about, especially because we started Hugging Face on this topic, uh, is open domain conversational AI, right? Like this obvious sci-fi dream that we've all seen in, in her and movies like that, being able to chat with an AI about a lot of different topics. Uh, this is really, really hard to do. It's kind of like impossible to do today. Uh, but hopefully in a few years, it will, it will be possible. Um, what's exciting also to me is that the transformers architecture that we were talking about is actually starting to make its way into computer vision, into time mm -hmm. series, into audio. And so what you're starting to see is that uh, the lines between the different machine learning domains are really uh, blurrier and blurrier now. Um, and so you're starting to be able to use transformer models and to use hugging face in things like time series, for example, so like Uber, for example, now is using transformers to do like the ETA prediction. Um, you start to be able to use it for like recommender systems. Uh, you start to be able to use it for biology, chemistry. And what's interesting is not that, you know, all the other domains are going to get accelerated the same way NRP has been but also that uh, you can start to merge them and use kind of like similar models to create multi-model models, right? So mm -hmm. for example, if you think about the fact that now we're using transformers on uh, audio, right? So detecting audio, um, it's really interesting to think about the fact that you can detect the audio and then analyze the text uh, to be able to do more powerful stuff. Or if you think about time series um, that is uh, used a lot for like fraud detection, for example, uh, if you add time series to NLP, um, then you get something even more powerful because you get the prediction for the fraud not only based on um, you know like the numbers of interactions for your products, for example, but also the kind of interactions, right? If someone is sending you an email that is uh, weird, then the probability for it to be a fraud uh, increases. So like merging all these different domains, which is something that uh, is very new because before it was very so siloed, uh, to me is, is extremely exciting. And, and uh, I hope we'll see more of that in the, in the future. Yeah, I agree, Clem. A huge amount of opportunity in the multimodal space in the years to come. And it seems really likely that transformers and transfer learning and probably hugging face will be at the forefront of that change. All right, Clem Melci, I greatly appreciate the time you spent with us today. I learned a ton and no doubt our scale up AI attendees did as well. Looking forward to catching up with you again sometime soon. Thanks. Thanks so much and have a good event, everyone. All right, that's it for this 5-Minute Friday episode as well. Keep on rocking it out there, folks, and I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon. <laughs>